Yellow Finn or Skipjack or Albacore. Albacore, what the hell's that? For once, our disgusting food isn't kept on the cheap shelves. It turns out you can only get your mouth round a bluefin if you're special and prepared to part with quite a lot of money. We've uh, met in this uh, underground car park because we're going to do some uh, secret filming. I was on my way into the heart of Mayfair for lunch at the Japanese fusion restaurant Nobu. Nobu is owned by chef Nobu and Robert De Niro. It's the hangout of lots of celebrities and this is the final resting place of lots of bluefin. Thank you very much. The question was, could bluefin really be so tasty that the well-to-do couldn't stop themselves from eating it into extinction? So, here goes. It's probably what it was like, eating a dodo in the 18th century or whatever it was. It doesn't taste disgusting, but maybe it is disgusting. Because it's going extinct. Okay, you two. Bye bye. There was something about eating an endangered species for lunch that didn't seem quite right. I was off to perform an experiment to determine whether endangered species should be taken off the menu or whether rich people should be allowed to continue eating their way through them one by one. Uh, this is the South Asian River dolphin, of which there are 1,200 uh, surviving in the wild as we speak. This is the giant panda. There's 1,600 of those left at the moment. And this is the uh, black-breasted leaf turtle, uh, which we don't know the numbers, but we know that it is endangered. So, would Nobu's clientele be happy to find any of these endangered species on their menu, or is it just fish that they're happy to eradicate? Come on, you guys. When I got to Nobu, I noticed that even they seemed to want their customers to leave the poor old bluefin alone. We've got the bluefin here, the uh, asterisk, and at the bottom, a bluefin tuna is an environmentally threatened species. Please ask your server for an alternative. Why they didn't just take ethically disgusting fish off the menu altogether, I wasn't sure. Hi there, can we have a chat with you? A BBC food documentary? Want to ask you about bluefin tuna and other endangered species? Are you celebrities? It's a bit drafty. Excuse me, we're filming for a BBC fish documentary. Can... OK. Hi there. Uh, we're filming a BBC documentary about fish. Can we, can we have a quick word? Nah. Yeah, they look pleased, though. They obviously had a nice lunch. Nobu's regular customers were experiment unfriendly, but then I had a tip-off that Jordan, one of Nobu's uber-celebrity customers, was about to surface. Apparently Jordan, a.k.a. Katie Price, is in a hotel just round the corner and uh, it looks like she's going to leave. Be careful crossing this road, you're already endangered, I don't want to lose any more of you. She was in the middle of her very public marriage meltdown and I wasn't the only one waiting for Mrs Andre. That's not her, by the way, but she did come out right after. OK, thank you. Katie. Hello. Uh, Alex Riley from the BBC. Katie, do you, uh, do you eat at Nobu? Would you rather have turtle, shark or, uh, or giant panda if you can't get blue bluefin tube now? Okay. So she obviously didn't hear what I was saying and uh, didn't go very well, to be honest. Uh, so we we'll just have to uh, accept that that's a... That's a don't know or not applicable. So back to the drawing board, back to Nobu. Let's go. Nobu's customers were keeping quiet. I thought I should clarify the position of the non-Nobu frequenting public. Excuse me, madam. We're, we're filming for a, for a BBC documentary about fish. Oh, fish. You... I love fish. Oh, yes, good. Yes. Lovely. Well, they, they set, at this restaurant here, they sell uh, the bluefin tuna, which is uh, endangered. Oh, yeah. And in three years' time, they think it'll have, they'll all have gone. So, we've had some ideas yes. of other endangered species yes. we could put on the menu in its place. So, All we've got right. the South Asian river dolphin, which we would uh, uh, do as a teriyaki. Giant panda tataki with a white miso soup. And then we've got the black-breasted no. leaf turtle with uh, we'd have that wasabi pepper. No. Any, pre any preference between the three of them? Or? Save them all, don't really? eat them. Come on, no. which, which, which of these three 
No. Animals, would you most like to to no. eat? Well, well, look, you no, know. No, I wouldn't eat none of them. But they, they could be very tasty and delicious, no. done in a traditional no. Japanese way with with a bit of uh, ginger. Yeah, I respect, and a, but I wouldn't do something like that. No, no okay. I couldn't. I couldn't break her. I tried and tried. I tried to get her to decide on one if she was really hungry, but no, she just thought there was no real need to eat an endangered species. Hmm. Maybe Nobu could uh, think along those lines. The people on the streets had spoken. Endangered species had no place on their menu. The people of Nobu refused to show their bluefin extincting faces but they did send me a message. As I read their statement, take this chance to see some bluefin tuna before it all gets eaten into extinction. Nobu restaurants take the issue of bluefin tuna and its environmentally threatened status very seriously and always has done. The consumption of this fish is a cultural institution in Japan and there's still an enormous demand for this delicacy at all our restaurants. We're also currently looking at Australian farm-raised tuna as an alternative. So there you go. For the time being, bluefin will remain on Nobu's menu. So if you want to eat our most ethically disgusting fish, make sure you get down there sometime soon. Because if you leave it any longer, there won't be any left. If you are too late, don't despair. If we carry on as we are, the swordfish, the orange ruffy, the sturgeon and the marlin will soon be on their way out. Then all other fish will follow. It seems strange that whole species were being fished to extinction. After all, someone had gone to a lot of trouble to make a lot of rules about who was allowed to fish what and where. OK, I'm going to start off with herring. Now, that's in the North Sea, so pop that there. 0 to 6 nautical miles, only a boat registered in that country can fish. Britain. Now, who else? 6 to 12. Only fish if your boat is registered in that country or if you have historic fishing rights. We've got Netherlands, Germany and, and France. Then 12 to 200 nautical miles. Only people whose vessels are registered in an EU country can fish in. If the distance between an EU and non-EU country is less than 200, well, so that's everybody then, isn't it? Basically, I'd found out that if you were a fish who wanted to know who you belonged to, you'd probably need to get hold of a red pen and an awful lot of stickers. So, for example, if you're a cod and you're in this area of the Atlantic in v triple one e there are certain boats that can try and catch you. However, when you move over the border into another area, perhaps other, other countries now have a quota for you. So you're trying to dodge some different nets. And then you come up through here, and there's different boats have got a quota for you. But some will probably be lining way. So it can spot you, and you're about to come into their area where they have got a quota because they're not allowed to get you when you're over that other area. So they're waiting here. Clearly, there were plenty of rules about who could catch what. The problem seemed to lie with the maths of how many fish could actually be caught. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six. I make that six goldfish. Be interesting to see what number the fisheries minister comes up with. If you can't agree on how many fish there are, it's quite tricky setting a quota for how many should be caught. Take the bluefin. Last year, fish counting scientists said for the bluefin to survive, you should only catch between 8,500 and 15,000 tonnes. But the politicians who set bluefin quotas said, nah, you can catch 22,000 tonnes. Then the fishermen went out and caught over 61,000 tonnes. It was the same story with lots of fish. I'd booked an interview with Hugh Aranka Davis, Britain's fisheries minister. I know fish move around a lot, making them hard to count, but I was fairly confident I'd correctly counted six fish in my tank. Judging by the fish catching quota system, my guess was Hugh would think I had nine. Something for the BBC, we've got an appointment with uh, Hugh Aranka Davis. The BBC Three. Hugh Aranka Davis, the uh, fisheries, the fisheries minister. Uh, what is something for people here from BBC? Are you talking there? With the uh, fish and some camera food? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they believe that has been cancelled. What? The Right Honourable Hugh Iranka had stood me up. We've been told it's been cancelled and you've got to leave the reception. There's, no, there's nobody else who could just, from the Ministry, who could just have a chat, just to explain the, the system to count, they're using to count the fish. No, they said it's all been cancelled. How many fish do you think are in the tank? There's, Seven. Mm, well, that's, <laughs> that's a politician's answer. There's actually six. <laughs> there's a six in the tank. But, you know, politicians might say seven. Eight, possibly nine. No. They tend to. They tend. 
They tend to add about 50% on top. I don't know how they're doing it. That, the lady on reception, she said seven. So, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's 